Okay guys, welcome to this very different video that I would usually make and this is basically my story of what I've been up to for the last 10 to 12 years. My crazy journey of how I went from skipping university to managing four businesses living in Dubai at 30 years old. And there's three key reasons that I made this video. And I think it's going to be really interesting for guys who are maybe a bit, a bit younger, they want to understand where they can go in life. But the main one first of all is that I want you guys to understand where I came from and what I've done to get exactly where I am right now. Number two is I want to show you what is possible because you're going to see this kind of like this journey that I've been on from age 18 from skipping university from choosing not to go to university thinking that I had no clear path in front of me not knowing what I wanted to do not knowing if I was going to be successful or not if I was just going to go live a normal life which I knew I didn't want and then the third reason is I want to look back on this video for me personally in 10 years time and see what progress have I made because it was harder back uh, around 10 years ago to document the journey YouTube wasn't such a big thing well it was a big thing but it wasn't like personal branding wasn't a big things so I want to also look back on my own video in, in 10 years time when I get to 40 and see what I've what kind of progress I've made what I've done with this video is I've done a slideshow which is basically a load of pictures that I've dug up from my childhood growing up and the distance the, the journey from going from probably around 15 years old to 30 years old and how I got to where I am right now some of the insights that I've got some of the mistakes I made and also how I actually started my first business so let's get straight into it guys and on to the first slide so this is, uh, this is me growing up. You can see this is my dad. So it's my dad here in the middle, my older brother, Adriano, myself, little mozzarella they used to call me and they still call me in Italy because I'm the only white person, the really white one, <laughs> white one that doesn't tan in my uh, family. And uh, this is me growing up, as you can see. I was about 14 years old here. This is in my dad's factory with my dad's Ferrari. So my dad was very, very successful when I was growing up. He had his own shoe distribution business all around Italy and Europe. So I was already naturally brought into the entrepreneurial lifestyle from a very young age and I enjoyed that. Every summer that I used to go and live with my dad, go stay with my dad, I would spend a lot of time working with him. He would be working all time, every day for many hours. So I enjoyed that. We'd go to the shops, we'd go to some of the different factories. I learned about manufacturing and production. So you can see from 14 years old, 15 years old, I was starting to get introduced into uh, working and being an entrepreneur. As we skip a little bit forward, this is around 18, 17, 18 years old. And you can see my first car. Wow, this brings back some memories. I was an absolute chav at the time. I was a bit of a chav at the time. You know, I wanted a very loud exhaust, massive speaker. This is my bedroom where I just basically, I'd wake up in the afternoon, I'd go work for my, uh, my first boss, Alan. Uh, at the Chinese takeaway. I'll always say thank you to Alan because he was the best boss uh, that I could have ever had at that time. And he uh, he taught me lots of things about, you know, real life, you know, working, etc., and having a good working attitude. He taught me a lot about being um, respectful and being on time and just, just everything that you need, good morals in life to really pull me for, push me forward into, into my next kind of stage of my career, which is my first, this was my first job. So I really enjoyed working for Alan, I absolutely loved it, but I'd go to work every single day with him. I'd come home, I'd play on World of Warcraft, I was addicted to, to gaming at this time. So this is my gaming PC that I built um, myself with Alan's help actually. And this was my life, you know, I lived in my mum's bedroom. I was uh, 17 years old, I'd left, uh, I'd left uh, sixth form at this point. And I decided I was trying to decide whether I'd go to um, sixth form. I, I'd, I was trying to decide whether going to university or working at a normal job. And one of the things that I actually made the decision was I didn't want to go to university. I didn't want to study anymore. I wanted to make money. That was it. I was like, I don't want to spend loads of money going to university because they just put the price up to £9,000 a year. I wasn't interested in living in student halls. I wasn't interested in their life. I just didn't have any want to actually go to university. I wanted to go to work and I wanted to make money straight away. So that's what I did for about... Uh, probably about a year or so. I'd left, I left sixth form, I didn't go to university and I worked for Alan at the Chinese. I'd go down to the casino, lose the money that I'd earn. And you know, that's just how life went for a year. And you know, it was okay, it was fine. But then at the age of 18 or, yeah, about just over 18 years old, I called my dad and said, look, I wanna come live with you. I'd always wanted to live with my dad from, from a young age. And that turned into this kind of lifestyle. So you, we've got a few images here that I pulled out. And you might be thinking, well, what, what are these images? Well, these images are some shoes that I tried to start selling. So straight away when I went to work with my dad, 
I started to get a kind of bit of entrepreneurial spirit, spirit behind me. Um, my dad supported me through that. So, you know, he said, right, well, why don't you try and buy some shoes with your own money through our contacts or our suppliers and put them into our shops. And if you sell them, we'll give you the money. So my dad really supported me straight away from a young age to really understand, okay, well, if I purchase this amount of stock, I put it into a shop and I sell it for this amount of money, um, how much money am I going to make? How much profit? What's the details? I started to learn about the fact that, you know, it's not always going to go well. I didn't make any money on this stuff. They didn't sell, even though I thought they would. I thought that I chose these designs against my dad's advice and, and I didn't make any money. I lost money. So I learned a very harsh lesson at this point. Uh, this is working in my dad's factory. And so I was, I was basically helping him out at all times in any kind of different way, whether it be going to the shops, working in the warehouse. I was doing everything. This is my first motorbike that I had in, the, in, in Italy and my car that my dad bought me as well. So I had a very good life here, but it, I also put my hand to other things. If you're wondering what this is, well, this is actually um, mushrooms. So I actually invested into getting these kind of mushroom, I can't remember the terminology in English to be honest with you, but what we did is we buy these box of these things from the mushroom manufacturers, where they are, and then you had to grow them. You'd have to hope that the temperatures and the conditions and everything went well. So you'd invest like five grand and the mushrooms, once they've all grown and cultivated, etc., you could sell them to the, to the wholesalers and you'd make a decent uplift. Unfortunately, again, they didn't grow very well. I lost money in it. School of hard knocks is just how it goes. So that was my life in Italy and that was for a period of around two years. I worked with my dad pretty much non-stop the whole time. Had a great life, I can't lie to you, I had a great life, but I can tell you right now that I learned more in those two years working for my dad in terms of real life business, how to deal with people most of all, how to make money from nothing. It was a very important two years for me and it kind of made me who I am today for, for sure. I would never get to where I am right now without having this experience and having my dad behind me to teach me the real business life. So after two years, I, I decided I want to go traveling. Traveling for me was always a big passion. I've always wanted to travel around the world. And the first place I wanted to go to was New Zealand. I wanted to go as far away as possible from everybody for some reason. But no, the main reason for me was actually Lord of the Rings. I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings growing up. And I thought, you know what, I want to go see Middle Earth. I want to go see where it's all been filmed. So I made my way over to New Zealand for a year and I did a gap year. And again, this was an, amaz an amazing year for me because it, it really made me a very strong, confident individual because I turned up in New Zealand with absolutely nobody to help me. Everything was my own responsibility. I had to find my own accommodation, I had to cook for myself or find myself some food somewhere. I had to fend for myself in every single way, provide for myself. I had to work, make sure I had enough money, manage my money correctly, find a car. Everything that you can think about when nobody can help you with anything, you're on the complete opposite side of the world, I had to do it for myself. And that really made me a very strong individual and I think that that basis gave me confidence and also starting my business when I'd leave New Zealand later on down the line. So a few images here. I essentially went to New Zealand to do a working holiday. So I ended up working a pub. Um, this is uh, Guido, my, one of my best friends from uh, Netherlands. We still stay in touch. We're still very good friends now. We've had many good adventures together. We traveled a lot. And some other some other people in the in the group there at the pub. This is in the brewery. They were an English couple, quite old. There was it was a bit of a passion project for them. And this was in um, I think this is this is down near Mount Cook. I can't remember the exact name of this lake. But I did a working holiday for a year. I travelled around for a bit. I worked for about a month. I travelled on, etc., etc. But this is a very good, important year for me. Here's me in one of the things again. I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings. You can see. So I went and did all the tours. And then after I left New Zealand, I came back to the UK and I was going to decide, if I, I wanted to actually go back to uh, Italy and live again with my dad and do some business, but for other personal reasons, I couldn't. So I ended up coming back to, uh, to the UK and I ended up getting a uh, job at VW Parkway uh, on Pride Park in Derby. You can see here in my suit. Here's me with the boys at New Year's when I came back. So it was good to be reunited with all my friends because I did miss them after a year of not seeing them. And yeah, I went into working in Volkswagen and that absolutely um, gave me the skills that I needed to start one of my, my first business because I developed interest into automotive industry and I learned a lot of things about customer service. I spoke about this a lot in some of my previous videos. And at this position here at Volkswagen, I um, ended up hearing about camper vans. Someone started speaking about camper vans on the forecourt. And it was actually this one, this is the first van that I ever saw and I started to think about camper vans and if there was money to do them, if there was any money in actually converting them. 
And lo and behold, I started to study it. I started to understand about the market. And it probably took me around three to six months to kind of get an idea for if there was a demand for this uh, service of converting vans. And how did that look like? Well, I basically spent um, three months learning everything you can about camper van conversions. And I also called up tons and tons of different businesses around the UK, and I had a set set of questions I asked them. And the reason that they were questions, they were to find out, okay, well, what's the demand like? What's the lead time? What's the prices? What the, what's, the, what's the details of the conversions? So I was basically doing like a reconnaissance for all the different camper van conversion companies in the UK. And one thing that, one trend that I started to realize and I started to understand from this exercise was that that there was a big waiting list for anybody who wanted a camper van conversion. Anybody who wanted to get their, take their van like this, get it converted, have to wait months to get in with a decent company. So that told me straight away that there was a demand, but also a shortage to the supply. So I knew that if I started a company and there was an option to get people in quicker, if I could provide the same quality and actually take that business. So that's when I started to understand that there was definitely a demand for it. I also started to ask them about prices in their conversions. I started to ask, okay, well, how much does this cost? What do I get for it? What are the materials, what are the product appliances, etc. And what I did in the background is then I went away and I started to find out, research these parts, where they came from and how much they would cost to buy. And I, I kind of masked myself as a, a potential camper van converter. I uh, had a business, I started to find out the trade prices. So I knew how much I could get them at trade price and how much margin there would be in fitting it. And I also started to ask other companies about, okay, well, if I bought you the van and I'm a company, would you do me a trade price on the full conversion if I brought you more and more vehicles? So I could buy the vehicles, send it to them to do, and on the basis that they think I'm gonna bring them more vehicles and I'll get a bit of a margin in it. Even if it's a much less lower margin than if you did it yourself, there's still margin to be done there. So there's still easy money to be made in this industry, industry doing that. And so after six months or so, after finding uh, all the things I needed to find out, I started uh, Cosmic Camper Vans. I got funding from uh, the government on a startup loans because I had no money. I had about a thousand pounds to my name and I couldn't start this business without at least 30,000 pounds. So I got a loan for around 25,000 pounds and I bought my first van. This is the first van I ever, ever did. And I ended up converting this on my drive. My first workshop was not ready for me to move in straight away. So I started doing some of the work on my drive. My, my neighbors must have thought I was crazy. Well, this is actually my first ever unit. So as you can see here, it's a farm shed. So I went up to a farm um, on the outskirts of Derby because I couldn't afford anything else. Nobody would take me in on a serious, um, on like an industrial estate because I had no company history. So you've also got to tackle this problem. You've got to think about, well, how can I, how can I prove to somebody that I'm, that I'm gonna make a success of this? And I didn't know myself, you know, a lot of my friends and families thought, well, what are you, you know, you, you're investing all this money. You've never done this before. You've never worked on a camper van before. You've never sold a camper van. But I just had to go with it. I didn't have any other choice. If I think if you're waiting for the perfect opportunity, it's never gonna come along. And I just had to make it work. There was no other option because if you're just waiting always to be able to get that kind of like perfect situation, you'll be there forever. So I just made it work. I had no other option but to make it work basically. And this is basically what I moved into. So I had to wait two or three months for them to build the actual little farm shed. And as you can see here, once they had built it, this is what it looked like. So they put the walls in here. So this is all I had, this space here. And this is exactly what I worked in for the whole time. And I started my camper van conversion business with this, with one, toolbox racking thing from Costco and a bit of racking here. A Hoover, an extension lead and a van. Guys, this is exactly proof of exactly what I started with. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never converted a van before. I'd never sold a van before. I'd never used power tools before, but I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make some money out of it. I'm going to make a success. And this is what I did. And I grinded my, basically my ass off for, <sighs> I can't even tell you how long. I would be in this unit from morning till night for the best part of two, three years. Always working, always, nonstop. And it was absolutely freezing cold. There was no heat in. There was no signal inside this unit here. You had to have to go walk outside in the freezing cold or rain to make a phone call. There was no food, no screw fix, nothing. It was an absolute slug going through it was it was brutal it was brutal run, working from this place and it was a 40 minute drive there and back every single day it was a very very difficult time but well, here it is this is me and roger 
Roger's been working with me, my number one guy. I would never be able to do anything that I've been able to do without him 100%. And this is when we were just kind of like probably two years in, I think. We got the three vans, we'd done some roofs on, and this is the kind of main business. This is when we started to kind of get people in, started to understand our, our customer service, and things were going well at this point. I was still not really making any money. Uh, I was still learning. Uh, very, very difficult period at this point, very stressed. And we was in this unit for about three years. And this whole time was basically just learning. I was just learning everything I could about the vans, making mistakes, dealing with the mistakes, losing money, keeping my reputation going, because I knew my reputation was the most important thing, my most important asset. So that's where I got to at this point. So after three years of being in this torturous unit, I decided I need to get out of here because it's not reflecting well on the business. I needed to be in a professional unit that really reflected my brand. And so I decided to move into this unit and it took me about a year to find a suitable place that would accept me because I was motor trade. Uh, I didn't have a huge amount of company history. It was three years, but I hadn't make it, really made any money. And um, the books were all over the place because I wasn't doing my accounting correctly. So I'd made a lot of mistakes when it came to being able to present my business in the right way uh, to be able to take on a premises. But in the end, we found this place. This is Unit 8, Endland Industrial Estate. Until still this date, we're still in, presently in this unit, but we have signed a new unit, which you'll see sh uh, later in the video. But we've been here for over five years now. And when I moved into this unit, I remember thinking very clearly, well, am I gonna be able to afford this? Am I gonna be able to afford and get the work in? Because it was a big step up. I was thinking I was paying around 500 pound a month before in the previous unit. And then this was over double, over double by quite a bit. And I thought this is a big, big step for me and I needed to make it work again. So I had to risk and I had to say, yeah, because I had to take a three year lease. So it's either make it work or go bankrupt. You know, if I couldn't pay the rent, we're gonna be problems. And then I've got a three year lease commitment to it. So throughout this period of, of actually running my business from this location, I started to look into different things. I started to think about other businesses, where can I make other money from? And this is where it led to me and this was a big learning for me. I started to look into drop shipping and um, e-commerce because I thought I was hearing all these things on YouTube about people making money with drop shipping and e-commerce. I bought into the courses, you know, I, I fell for the courses as a lot of people do. And one of the reasons I've always wanted to make sure that if any ever did an info product business myself, which I do have the Trades Freedom Toolkit, it would be 100% 100% based upon real actual success, not just uh, trying to get people in and selling them a course. So if you are interested, by the way, that is our Trades Freedom Toolkit. Uh, we help tradesmen scale their businesses genuinely because you can see from this story and which you will see moving down the video exactly how and what i've done to get to where i am now so i i actually made a lot of a uh, a lot of mistakes through this period uh, because i was focusing on other th on other things and i was trying to run three other very high intense businesses such as drop shipping and e-commerce and i end up spending money on trying to get these products into the uk thinking that we could get around the drop shipping essence by having the stock in the uk so we end up uh, testing this product not really testing it enough to figure out if there's actually going to be any sales buying lots of stock having it available on the shelf and then no one ever bought it. So it was a massive loss and I learned a lot from this and I just wouldn't ever get into dropshipping or e-commerce again, to be honest with you. It's just, it's a very, very, very difficult business model. So for me personally, it's not the kind of things I like to do and I wouldn't get into it again, in my opinion. But I learned from it and that's the main thing. I learned from the situation. I learned from the, the mistakes that I made, not investing too heavily in stock before seeing actual genuine um, want for your product and also just thinking that a lot of of things that you see on YouTube and a lot of these kind of like get rich quick schemes they are just a fad and they are just making money from you by buying your course by buying their course so I, I stayed away from that in the future and then I got into a bit of a different stage of my business I said I need to focus on what's actually making me money and that was my my camper van conversion business but at this point, I realized I was making lots of mistakes. I could be doing better. I was great at selling. I was great at customer service. I was good at the job, but I just wasn't making enough money. I wasn't making enough money. I didn't have an idea of what money I was making in my business. Everything was taking a lot of time. I couldn't manage my staff members correctly. Just loads of different issues, loads of different issues. I was stressed. And I said, I need to change this. I need to do something in my business 
to get it to the point where I want it to be, where I, where I set out to be a business owner, when I wanted to be an entrepreneur, my goal was to have freedom, time freedom, location freedom, and wanted to be a proper business owner. But the situation I found myself in was that I was working all hours of the day. Everything was reliant on me being in the business. So if I didn't turn up or I went on holiday, nothing worked. Nobody knew what was what was going on from, from uh, an operations point of view without me being present as well. So everything relied on me. And I knew that if I wanted to really achieve my goals of being a, an entrepreneur, I had to remove myself from the business. And the only way I was going to be able to do this was to find a mentor because I didn't know what I was doing wrong and I didn't know what the right path would be to, be, to, to take. So I reached out to a personal friend of mine, this is Dav, and he said, you should speak with, uh, with this gentleman here. I'm not gonna name him, but he has uh, been my mentor and he showed me a completely different way of doing business. So I'm always very, very thankful to him, absolutely, because he instilled in me this mindset that you have to get other people to do, you have to leverage other people. You have to leverage systems, you have to leverage processes, you have to organize your business correctly and you've got to get a grip on it and you've got to make sure that the business is not dependent on you to operate if you ever want to sell the business especially, which is one of my goals. So this is uh, probably two years or so we were working together. We still work together now, very good working relationship. And I can tell you hand on heart that that process completely changed the outlook on my business's progress and my personal life as well. And I started to take a step back from uh, working on the tools. And if I give you a bit of an idea of what my life looked like before I started working with my mentor, well, I'd be on the phone, I was fitting roofs, I was uh, here coming in there, I was organizing stock, I was doing sales, I was doing customer service, I was doing handovers, I was doing everything. And I was good, making good money, but I was doing everything myself. So it was very, very inefficient and it was very, very stressful for myself. I was working 12, 14 hour days all the time, on weekends, going in, doing handovers. It was just wasn't organized, but I didn't know I was doing it wrong because no one showed me the right way to do it. So thankfully, with the help of my mentor, this all turned around and he put me on the right path. And I took that advice and I started to really run with it. And that's when the biggest amount of progress that I've had in my business has been from, from that point. And I'm starting to understand that people know how to do these things. If you pay them, they'll tell you how to do it and then you can go and do it and then you get a better life in, in exchange for it. You just have to learn to invest the money first to be able to then take the knowledge, acquire the knowledge and implement it. And this started to look like different things that came into my business. So I started to make content for YouTube. I started to um, do trade partnership opportunities, started to look into distribution of uh, different parts. So by actually taking a step back teaching my staff members how to do the work in the manual work for me, it gave me time to focus on actually, okay, well, I need to develop this business and how can I do that? And I went through many dead ends, you know, you do go through dead ends, but you learn from them. And that's one thing I've been very good at. I've learned from all the mistakes that I've made. I've learned from the dead ends I've gone up and I've started to really get myself into a position where I know exactly what I should be doing every single time. And throughout this time as well, I started to also progress further in my, my personal life. I bought my own house. Uh, with my with my partner at the time and this is us eating chinese on the floor as we we first moved in because we didn't have anything so we built everything but guys this is what my life looked like if you look on this picture i would get in from work and i was absolutely shattered i was uh tired you can see it in my eyes i'm just stressed my hair i wasn't taking care of myself properly because work just came first and i was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on it was a very, very difficult period for me before I uh, kind of started to implement the, the necessary changes that I needed in my life. And then we got to um, a little bit further in, as you can see, probably about two years in, I started to look more at personal branding, started to document the journey, started to focus a lot more on content. And this was a, a five year anniversary. So I had my five year anniversary with all my, uh, my family and my friends and my staff members. And it was a very big moment for me personally because I thought, wow, you know, I've, I've managed to start this business from absolutely nothing. I've managed to employ people. I've managed to make uh, something of myself. I've made it to five years, which most businesses, I think is, I don't know what the st statistic is of, of how many businesses start and fail within the first year. But I started to feel a little bit more successful at this point. I started to understand that I was onto the right path. I was doing the right thing. And yeah, it was just a good moment for me in my life at this point. And moving on again here, then things just started to keep going and going in that direction. 
So I continued to take a step back from the operations of the business in terms of like the, the manual work. I started to implement more uh, important processes. I started to focus more on sales. Everything I could do to make the business more efficient and more uh, profitable it meant that it made my life better in, in a personal way and I started to enjoy that. I changed my Golf R, I bought a brand new Range Rover and that's when I started to feel like, yeah, this is this is a good life and I, it's actually worth all the hard work that I'd put in. Uh, when you get in that car, when you know you've bought it yourself from your own hard work, then you start to really um, get a good feel for, for this life of being a business owner. But don't get me wrong, I was still stressed, still deal, dealing with a lot of personal stuff, still um, going through uh, the difficulties of running a business it never gets any easier well okay it doesn't it does get easier but the difficulties change and you just learn to build upon them you take that resilience and you build resilience on a personal level I start to enjoy myself a, a bit more as well because I could take time away from my business start to be able to go skiing go on holidays and the business wouldn't fall apart if I didn't turn up so I started to be able to actually implement the things that I've been trying to learn for the last two years and then this is where my life took a big big change okay at this point so this is around November 2022 and I got to the point where I had a very very difficult year in my business um, we had one of our main staff members leave and I was just experiencing very very low personal levels of um, satisfaction I was I was feeling a little bit up, I wouldn't say upset well I was just feeling stressed I was feeling very very stressed with, with my life I wasn't in shape I couldn't get into a good routine. I wasn't making the money I wanted to make. And I think I got to the point where I thought, you know, something needs to change again. You know, I got to the point of six years and six, five or six years into the business. And I thought, I need to, I want to go traveling again. I want to go traveling, but I also want to put into practice all the things that I'd learned about getting my business to a point where I wouldn't need to be, the, the business wasn't dependent on me. So I took the decision, I wanted to go to Thailand. I wanted to go travel uh, Thailand for a few months. And this is uh, where I got to. So I flew uh, business class with Qatar to, um, to Thailand. I absolutely loved it. And it was the first taste of a bit of freedom. I made some amazing friends along this way as well. As you can see, this is my friend Andrew. We met when we was doing some uh, Muay Thai, some sparring. And uh, that was a very, very good journey for me. I made lots and lots of friends along this way and it was probably one of the best years of my life. We met Jack and the other guys. Uh, it was just amazing, absolutely amazing. I went into a boxing ring. I fought somebody at the, the, the drunk bar that they have in PP Islands. So lots of new experiences, lots of new adventures, lots of new friends. And this is actually when I came into this, this group and which is called the New Elite. So Jack was uh, one of my uh, reasons that I went to Thailand because I actually saw one of his videos on YouTube learn, uh, teaching people what the, the life of uh, Muay Thai fighting is like in, in, in Thailand because the re one of the reasons I wanted to go to Thailand is I want to try Muay Thai. I wanted to kind of clear my head. I thought, I want to get into shape. I want to fix my body. I want to clear my mind. I want to go back to the UK with a very, very clear mind to get my business back on track. And I came across Jack's video on, uh, on YouTube about, uh, about living in Thailand. So I ended up meeting him. He started a group called the New Elite. At the time it was called the Triangle of Masculinity. And I started to meet lots of new friends who were all on the same path. Everybody here has their own business. They're all getting into shape. Obviously some of the guys are already in amazing shape as it was. But I started to really make some new friends with the same goals, the same values, same hard working attitude. And that just really, really, really changed my life 100% because I can hand on heart tell you that I would not be where I am right now in Dubai, living in a villa, if I'd not met Jack and the boys from the New Elite because this 100% changed my kind of guy, my, just changed the path of my life. I ended up staying in Thailand for a lot longer than I expected to. I actually ended up moving back to Thailand to live there for another six months. I only meant to go there for around two to three months. But after meeting the guys and starting to learn about online business, starting to learn about, about personal branding, starting to learn about all these different ways of making money online, I just thought, well, you know, there's such a good opportunity here. And me and Jack formed an amazing friendship. I can hand on heart say that Jack is one of our best friends. He's a fantastic guy. He's built such a great network. And we started to experience some amazing uh, new experiences together, flying business class together. He'd flown business class obviously before I had as well, but we flew with Emirates Business Class to Dubai. We went to Dubai to do some business. He had a podcast to do. He asked me to go with him. 
I wanted to scout out the situation in, in Dubai as well. So lots of new opportunities, lots of new friends, and lots of new, uh, having friends who you can do this, these kind of experiences with. You know, as you grow your own personal journey, you do start to make a bit more money. You want to enjoy that money in different experiences. And it's great to have the right people around you who can do that with you. We went into Dubai, we landed, and we went in and we did our first podcast. Uh, we actually did two podcasts. This is actually the first one. So Jack, about one day before this was planned, he was planned to do the podcast with Justin Waller and Stephen Ronald Bell. He asked me, do you want to come in and co-host it with me? <laughs> I've never done a podcast before in my life. But you know what? I said, okay, we're going to run with it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? And uh, it was a very nerve wracking to be able to go and do a podcast with these two guys. I looked up to them. They were both very good entrepreneurs, top level guys in the in in many different spaces. And I thought, okay, well, what I need to, to take this opportunity whilst it's here and um, and run with it. We also did another a great podcast with Alex and Wakar, two really good friends of ours out here in Dubai. Um, we started to make more contacts, started to learn more about this online business world. And it was a great, great opportunity. You know, I had a great time in Dubai last year, three, three months that we were, uh, three months, three weeks that we were here, me and Jack. And we, that's when we proceeded back to, back to the UK. So I decided to go back to the UK <clears throat> and things changed for me. I started to implement a lot of the things that I'd learned about online business and sales funnels and networking and personal branding. I started to implement this into my business in the UK. I started to change things up again. I was always learning new things, implementing it into my business. That's why I've managed to take my business so much further ahead than some of my competitors in the recent, uh, recent years. I also had an opportunity to speak publicly for the first time. So again, Jack asked me if I wanted to do a, a talk to the New Elite Boys in, in London at the summit. So I went full, full steam ahead with that and I took the opportunity. I made, made a PowerPoint, spoke about various different things that guys should consider. Again, a bit of a nerve wracking situation, being asked to stand up in front of 40, 50 people, no experience ever doing it before, talking about um, various different matters. And it was, it was quite nerve wracking to be honest. But listen, again, I had this opportunity in front of me. I said, I was gonna hit it. I'm not scared of anything like that. I'm just gonna do it. And that's where I got to that point, you know, I, I started to, and it was a good experience speaking publicly, actually. I would like to do it again. Then I also achieved a bit of a milestone in my life. Uh, I actually bought my Holy Grail watch, uh, as you can see here. I've been dreaming about this watch for many, many years. I'd had a Rolex uh, Submariner before and a Rolex GMT Pepsi before. And I thought, you know what, I want to get the best one, my Holy Grail. It's kind of like a, a, a milestone for me to show all the hard work that I'd put into my business and and success that I've made and basically to, to keep it on. I've still got it here. It's my favorite thing. I never take it off. And it's always reminded to me about the, the journey that I've been on to get to where I am right now. And then we went to Ibiza. What well, Ibiza, what a time. We had an amazing holiday. If any of you have watched Jack's videos on his YouTube channel, you'll know that we did actually get um, broken into and our villa got robbed on this time. And <clears throat> what can I tell you about this situation, guys? Well, first of all, lock your stuff up and don't go to IB for in a villa if you can. But also it's not about um, the bad times, it's about who you've got around you. Because if I had not had these friends around me, these this group of lads who I'd made amazing friends with whilst I was in Thailand, you know, that situation would have been a lot worse, but we just took it in our stride. We learned, we understood that it was just money. We could always get it back. We were safe and we were gonna to continue to have a great holiday because it was my birthday and I felt really bad at this point because I'd brought all the boys to Ibiza for my birthday and everything it had just gone to shit. We had all our stuff stolen, lost thousands and thousands of pounds. And if it had not been for that same group of friends, I think it would have been a completely different situation. But we carried on, we hit the holiday hard, we had a great time despite the fact that we'd all lost thousands of pounds, had all our clothes stolen off us. And you know, that's one, one story, it's about having strong individuals around you to deal with things like that. Because if I'd have had other group of friends maybe who are a bit of a weaker mindset, that would have broke them. But these guys, they took it in the stride, we fucking dealt with it, and we had a great time no matter what. So yeah, it was a great time. I started to enjoy my life even more at this point in this summer. So last summer was a pretty crazy summer for me. Fast forward into maybe the, the later end of last year, I started to come to Dubai, I came to Dubai again, started doing some more work. Met up with some more guys in, in the New Elite, did some networking and, and I went to Will, William Brown's Mastermind and I learned a lot about online business and um, info products at this point as well. So this whole year, 
if we look back on uh, this this period here, this whole year was spent um, not only networking, but also learning a hell of a lot about online business in general. So sales funnels, info product businesses in general, okay? And I think the info product space gets a bit of a bad name for itself. But if you actually consider the, the fact that many people go to university in the UK and they spend thousands and thousands of pounds for courses to learn a skill or learn something about an industry, there's no difference between actually doing that through a, uh, an online business like this and going to university. So actually saving yourself probably thousands of pounds by not going to university and doing it on a specific skill or industry for an info product business out here. As long as you go with someone who's actually done what they're teaching you, then I think it's a good idea. So I started to learn about online business and why it was a very good opportunity to get into right now and hence why I'm doing a lot more content. I have my own program and I'm teaching people everything that I've done in my business and teaching them how to do it. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is that it is completely possible. I think a lot of people think that there's a lot of scams out there, but they don't take the time to actually implement most of the stuff they learn anyway. So, you know, not everybody can be a business owner, not everybody can do it. But if, if those who are out there that want to work hard, who actually want to do it, then it is possible. And that's what I learned over the last few, uh, the last few months and the last year as well from, from networking with these people and understanding what this kind of world is like. I then moved back to Thailand. So at the end of that summer, I decided I want to go back to Thailand. I moved to Bangkok. I got one of the best places I could live in, an amazing apartment. And I started to take my health and fitness a lot more seriously as well, because as you know, one of the reasons that I went to Thailand is that I, <clears throat> I decided that my, my health and fitness was not good enough. And so this became a big part of my life and I started to really start to, to focus on this a lot. And I did a, I did a, a undisclosed boxing fight with, with one of the guys in another network the, in the war room. We put kind of like names in the hat as such. We didn't know who we were fighting. We just turned up on the night and we gave it our all and I had a great time and I had a new experience for myself. And then I came back to Dubai again and met up with, with, with Wakar and Sully and Jack and we had some, some good food and we, we started to talk about more online business. So you know again more opportunities to network with people and i think this is one of the good things i am good at is is really getting to know people well and learning about them and providing them value as well and then okay so that was a that's quite a quick way to get to this point but we are now in 2024 uh close to the present day but i came back from thailand because i decided that thailand is a great place to be and live and i would absolutely want to live there again one day but right now I need to build my empire. I need to make my, my, my empire in every way possible. And you can't really do that in Thailand unless you want to kind of live that kind of relaxed lifestyle, have a lot of money coming in uh, naturally without having to work for it over there. You can't really invest that well in Thailand. So for me, it didn't line up with where I wanted to be in my life right now. Maybe in a few years time, maybe in 10, 15, 20 years time, it would work well. And also the visa situation is a problem. But I also <clears throat> got to the point where I thought, Everything that I've been learning through the last 18 months of these connections I've made, this knowledge that I've gained, these, these the masterminds and programs I invested in, I need to apply it. But I didn't have an info product business, but the principles of what I'd learned could definitely be applied to my physical business, my camper van conversion business back in the UK. So I came back to the UK, I bought my dream car straight away because if I'm gonna come live in the UK, I'm gonna have the best car that I can have and I've always dreamed about having an M3. So literally two days after landing in the UK, I had my brand new M3 on, on March the 1st, registration day, 24 plate, absolutely amazing car. I will miss it so much, I don't have any more. But yeah, absolutely loved it. And I decided to spend the next six months absolutely grinding out in my business and applying everything that I'd learned in terms of uh, online business, ads, marketing, CRM systems, automations, sales funnels, everything that I could, I applied it to my physical business. And all I can say to you guys is that has absolutely transformed my business, absolutely transformed it. And this is what I'm teaching people now in, in the Trades Freedom Toolkit is how can you detach yourself from your business? How can you bring in genuine high interest leads through this process that I've found, that I've analyzed, I've implemented, I've tested it, I've refined it, and I teach people how to do this as well. So if you are interested in that by any chance, just go to the description below, you'll see a link to the Trades Freedom Toolkit where you can book a call with me to learn more about how I've managed to get my business this point, how I've managed to actually run my business completely remotely from Thailand and now Dubai for over nearly two years. Bearing in mind, I have staff, I have premises, I have customers coming down every single day. So, you know, it's, it's been a quite an interesting uh, journey. I can teach people how, how to do that as well. And then I also found another opportunity. 
and that was to look into these these vans. So I noticed there was a business who wanted to um, expand into Dubai, and I want to live in Dubai. I wanted at this point I wanted to live in Dubai for tax reasons, but also for centrally geographically located reasons, and also from a safety perspective as well. I spoke about this a lot in some of my videos, but for me the UK is is not in a great position right now. There's too much. Uh, negative stuff going on and I'd never really enjoyed living in the UK anyway mostly for the weather the food the kind of culture for me doesn't really align with it so I always wanted always wanted to move to Dubai but I needed a reason to do that I needed a reason okay well what am I going to go do in Dubai if I'm going to go sit there and, and not actually work so <clears throat> I decided then, okay I need to look into investing in a business and this perfect opportunity came up and this is how I came to actually becoming a director of uh, Driven Land Jets over here in the UAE. So you can see here I came over in April, I did some um, market research, started to learn about the vans, started to learn about the market over here, why people would want to buy them etc etc. So then uh, yeah I decided to make the investment into Driven Land Jets uh, UAE and we made a deal and this is one of the reasons I'm over here because I also like to have physical businesses as on top of, of our online businesses so that was one of the reasons and I think there's going to be a very good market I've got a lot of experience with it a lot of experience in van conversions obviously seven years I've run my own business so we had a good deal and we decided to get go forward with it so that's where I've ended up here in Dubai with that and again over the year over the summer had a great time I enjoyed myself went to Ibiza I flew with a private jet on a private jet back to the UK for the first time I've ever been on a private jet what an experience so thank you Jonathan this is the guy who invited me on the on the flight back a friend of mine for a network fantastic entrepreneur very 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 top level entrepreneur so at this point I started to enjoy myself again over the summer Ibiza holidays so I to really kind of like take into my stride the business uh, operations, running it remotely, understanding uh, where I needed to do the work and kind of like sitting back and just kind of like managing from a, from a backseat the businesses that I was running. And then here we are almost to the present day. This is about three or four weeks ago. I actually uh, flew to Dubai and now living with one of my old mentors, and uh, mentors, one of my old mentees, Harry. So he uh, got in contact with me uh, around last year when he saw me on one of the podcasts with Justin Waller and, and SRB and Jack. And uh, yeah, I helped him with a few things. And now again, we're, we're good friends. We live together here. We flew business class to Dubai, his first business class flight. That was a great experience for him. So I was very happy to do that with him. And now we live together. So this is me and Charlie. I met Charlie in Thailand at the New Elite Mastermind uh, in Koh Samui. And this is basically where we got to right now. We're like one of the kind of like goals I'd always had in my life was to have like a, a big villa with the, with the lads, everybody working hard on their businesses, eating good, having a maid to do everything for us, making content, working on, on the business again, going to gym, enjoying life and that's where I got to you know it took me about 18 months to get to this point but I knew I was always wanted to do this because productivity just goes through the roof when you're around these kind of guys you're all on keeping each other accountable everybody's on the same path and it's very important to have those kind of people around you when you've got such a big goal in your head like I have and, and to build an empire you can't have any distractions so having these guys around me, we've got our maid now who, who's cooking everything for us as we need, all the good foods that we need. We're going to gym together every single day. We've got a great uh, kind of like friendship. We keep each other having a good time. And yeah, this is basically where we got to. So this is the, this is the present day. We're in Dubai hitting the gym lads mum just came over to dubai as well just showed her around showed her a great time she loves it over here and then we've also did our first handover for driven land jets uae over here so this is me and my business partner and which is our one of our customers mr adam nasir and this is the van that we built for him so this is a great great van we really really enjoyed this one it came out absolutely stunning what a fantastic setup and overall I was very very happy with the process so now it's time to scale this business so if any of you watching for some reason you might need a, a, a driven land jet you need a v-class conversion you know where to come this is where I am I'm doing these conversions for people over here now with the new business that I've just invested into here's a bit of a shot of what it looks like inside and this is present day guys that is where I've got to now. That's the story of the last 10 to 12 years, very, very briefly. I've had some crazy moments. Unfortunately, 
most of the crazy stuff I can't put on YouTube, I can't speak about because I've had some pretty interesting situations, but that is exactly what is possible if you put your mind to a certain goal. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, always. I wanted to have my own businesses, I wanted to live a life of freedom, I wanted to be in shape, I wanted to live the life I'd always dreamed of, and I just got to work and I made it happen. There's really no other way around it, guys. That's all I can say to you. I've learned lots of things along the way. You make mistakes, you learn from the mistakes, and you keep on going anyway. And there was a period probably around 18 months ago, just before I went to Thailand, I thought about giving up. I thought I had enough of the business. I thought about just going to work for a big company, using the knowledge I'd learned, going to settle for a normal nine to five. But I knew that I would always, always regret that decision. I knew I'd regret it. And I'd never be the man I always wanted to be if I took that, that choice. So I had to hit it again, hard work, get back onto the grind. And I will never, ever, ever consider giving up again because I know that what I've done over the last 18 months has completely changed the trajectory of my life. I'm very, very happy right now. I've got a great life and it's only gonna keep getting better because I will never give up with the work that I've done. And I hope that this video for myself that I look back on is to remember to never give up and keep going, keep pushing, keep going for those goals. And I wanna build my empire. And guys, I really hope that you are able to see what I'm able to do over the next 10 years. Thanks for watching.